television. We good to go? We are good to go. As soon as I hit the share button. Oh, you you hit the share button, or at least you said you did. No, no, no. I mean, like, actually share. Oh, okay. To actually share something. All right. Okay, here goes. Shh. Welcome to Everyone Racers, a show designed for the world of low dollar racing and an oddball car culture. It doesn't matter what kind of Lemma Champ or Lucky Track Dog League you run, SECA or NASA, we won't discriminate. As long as you drive it hard and build it yourself. Join us each week for tech discussions, tips and tricks, as well as news and notes from the world of amateur endurance racing. And whether it's on the spot, Ella Sweet will be lucky enough, and Chrissy, and Chrissy, Chris, and I give you just the tip. For sure you'll giggle a little and learn even less. Everyone report to the paddock. This is Chris. This is Chrissy. I'm Jeff. And I'm Mental. And we are Everyone Racers. Welcome to another prime number episode of our podcast. I'm sure you were expecting small block as this episode is 283, but we did that 265. 283 is the 61st prime number and is a twin prime with 281. What else is prime? Must have been a slow news day. Nothing came up when we Googled 283. So there's that. Check out your bingo card because you never know what we're going to talk about what might come up. So check it out. Question. Yo. What's the twin prime number? Does anybody know? Yes. No. It's the next prime number. So the next prime number from 261 is 281. The previous prime number is a twin with the prime before that. I was told there'd be no math. <laughs> and we don't even know if he's lying, but we do know that somebody who's yelling at the radio trying to give us more uh, Donnie right now or right? some of them Donnie. engineers, it's, right? So we're not math. doing math. We're just stating numbers. Same thing. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Mental, what you working on? Uh so as the uh our Facebook uh message thread and our Slack channel, I actually started working on the Mercedes. So I've got the the engine off of it and uh, gonna do that. I've I've swapped out the PVC valve, which I I'm hoping really might be the problem because the uh, interior is covered in oil. And now I'm succumbing to a little bit of while I'm in there itis and I'm going to pull the injectors off and have those sent off to be cleaned and balanced and, and do that kind of good stuff. I wait, also, wait. Who, who are you? Who are you doing <laughs> things? Well, properly. I don't understand. Yeah, let's, let's wait till we see if it runs when I okay. bolt it back together. I did order new bolts because they're aluminum and they stretch. So I'm replacing them. Yeah, get them the kit from FCP Euro as the gaskets and the bolts and all that stuff. Exactly what I did. Yes. Yep. Uh, all right. Uh, Mental, not everybody knows exactly what the Mercedes is for sorry, the new yes, listeners. It's, it's, the, it's our, my, my 2007 CLS 63 AMG that I bought from Chris and Chrissy a number of years ago. And it developed a, a bizarre series of misfires. The professional shop says it needs a head gasket, which is thirteen thousand dollars. So I'm not doing that. Uh, but also, I, said, no, it I think it. I think they're wrong because it's not eating coolant, it's not smoking, it's not overheating. And so I have, I uh, a, a benefit of all this silly racing stuff that we do is I do have a very uh, a, a knowledgeable and vast, um, a, you know, trusted circle of friends to bounce mechanical theories off of and. I think we've settled on the right answer it being unmetered air getting in there or oil is getting in there and fouling everything. So I'm, I don't know. Uh, I've been working on some, uh, some, some wood projects here at the house. Cause I've cleared some space out was filming this past Sunday with the Rami show and the featured car he's reviewing is mine. The, uh, 2016 Indy Miata. So they took that out for a spin and comparing it with old porches. And then, um, Tomorrow, it was supposed to be Friday. Tomorrow, I'm getting my much anticipated ankle surgery to uh, correct the gimp that many people have seen me have at Lemons Races. And in anticipation of that, I got uh, this knee scooter, you know, a little more of my style that uh, we bought after Vicky got run over. And so there it is right there. And of course, it's jammed up because I'm, and so I took it all apart and then you I know, started off as a sharing. blue, blue yes. knee scooter for those on audio. And, and now, now, yeah, now yeah. it is properly gulfed wow. out a little bit, you know, did up the wheels because you got to have some bling here in Vegas. Oh, I didn't realize that's nice. That's just like silver paint <laughs> on the plastic wheels. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And then black <laughs> marker to highlight it a little bit. All right. So, uh, cause I'm, I'm based, still basically a child and that's why it looks like a child did this. So 
that's what I've been working on. Wholeheartedly appreciate it. It's appropriate. You, you would. <laughs> yep. Because yep. Jeff is a connoisseur of the proper I, application of, of blue colors. and orange. I'm, I'm yeah. a sucker for golf colors. Yeah. Don't make me go get my hat. Yeah, Pointing <laughs> at the sticker of my car. Right there. there, there we go. Okay. Uh, awesome. Uh, so Jeff, what are you doing? Every everyone else is probably going to say the same thing. At least the next three. Uh, we were watching the Super Bowl because the Eagles were in the Super Bowl and we we're near Philly. Um, I and I had an interesting experience on Saturday. Uh, my uh, wife's friend was having a fiftieth birthday party. We live right near Philly, and she grew up there. So we went into the northeast section of Philly, which is not exactly known for being the most prized part of the city. Creatively and, named Northeast. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and we went to this little tiny hole in the wall Italian place and we were waiting for her to show up because it was a, a surprise birthday party. And we ate like 87 pounds of the most amazing Italian food. The woman showed up, we screamed happy birthday and her husband who I swear to God is 400 pounds. If he's an ounce said, I, listening. I hope you all saved room for the entrees. And we were like, we've been eating for four hours. And then a whole new set of food came out and they had to roll us all out of there. And now we know why he weighs 400 pounds. But so yeah, that was food crimes. I committed food crimes. I committed personal crimes on myself with food. I felt like the guy from seven, somebody was going to come kick me in the, Never mind. Let's keep going. <laughs> Super wow. Bowl, Eagles lost. Nobody climbed a pole. Oh, I think they did, didn't they? Well, they did. We, I didn't climb a pole. Nobody in Jeff's group climbed. <laughs> we didn't climb right. a pole. Because <laughs> right. he was too full to climb a pole. Like, you're Woo. like, I'm not doing that. I'm full. And I, I, I had the, like, meat sweats, like, hour two. It was pasta crazy. Pasta sweats? Yeah. Uh, no, because yes. the pasta didn't come out until hour four. It was crazy. Oh. Chris, what you working on? <laughs> I finished fixing Chrissy's mom's car. It's a 2009 Mazda 5. It needed some fuel injector seals and a valve cover gasket and little things, but all done. Drives great. No problems. I did manage to fly the plane somewhat on Saturday, which was great. It was uh, Sa Sasha actually helped out. He brought the plane to where I was, where, well, where, where it usually is and brought an instructor with him, another guy he knows. So I went out with that guy for a while and the plane, he did a great job. So much better than that first instructor I had. Um, so yeah, your defense, got, you only got to spend like 10 minutes with that first instructor. No, I was, oh, no, no, I was the other second instructor. yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. No, I, I never, this, the, no, I, this was my second instructor recently. The first one I had two sessions with, it was, you know, two and a half hours oh, okay. total. And uh, I was catching up on my episodes. And when you yeah. got like the two hour drive for the 10 minute taxi around the, uh, yeah, same guy. But, uh, anyway, this, this, this guy was much, much, much better. So, uh, but I did manage to find a third now third instructor local to the airport with good availability and who's, you know, I can get on the schedule. No problem. So we have reasonably priced Sunday. or yeah, nor there's market, no such thing market, as reasonable. Market, no market market rate. Um, <laughs> But you know, when we're paying uh, one third of the price for the plane time, because we have our own plane, as opposed to renting someone else's, it makes it all worthwhile. Um, now, so anyway. uh, we have a guest here, and I should say, Alan, you probably have visions, like Chris is talking about his own plane. This is a lemons grade pain yeah. oh I, I was picturing something janky oh trust me yeah. totally janky well, when well he also heard mention sasha. of sasha yeah. sasha yeah. you know yeah yeah, yeah. Sasha. <laughs> yeah by the way sasha's about to do his check right he has over 100 hours so far so oh, he's well he's got nothing better to do does he deep I mean, into this plane thing um but, and i will down, say he does not oh it's what 20 minutes from his house yeah that, he does a much better than... job of plane maintenance than he does with lemons and car maintenance he, he I understands hope. this is serious you, well you have yeah, to he really does there yeah. there's there's regulations yeah. it's true there are, that's what there you are a lot me, of regulations lying, there are. But, you know. oh yeah no everything has to be signed off by an a p and you know they have to go through there's a lot of training and it, it's very serious they're very serious about everything with aviation like like no you really Good actually thing. have to do this properly you can't um, just cut the roof off anytime you no. want no, you can't. No convertible I planes. Yeah. I don't think anyone not... questions Sasha's mechanical ability. That his question is decision making. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. But anyway, he really helped me out. Um, got so I did get to fly the plane. I'm flying again on Sunday, hopefully, if everything goes well, knock on wood. 
And then I installed some out new outside lights at the house to replace the 20 year old janky, ugly Hampton Bay ones. And we got some cool ass LED. You can't see they see them in the picture. But hey, oh, I see them. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, oh, you, cool. you, you can't really tell what they really look like. Yeah, you just see the bright lights, the bright white. Yeah. They're much yeah. better, much more interesting. But that involved um, boat building pro- boat building tools and having to epoxy together the uh, square light boxes that were s- bricked in the front of the house that was part of it broken in every single one. So I whipped up some epoxy and thickener and stuff and rebuilt them all. And anyway, involved a hair dryer hanging from the lights for a half hour <laughs> at a time because it was cold and I needed the epoxy to harden up and longer of a project than planned but all done now nice and solid looks great it does look great we got compliments too all right yep. so while uh chris is flying a plane and leaves me home all the time because i'm not going to go sit in the car and watch him fly around airports for a while i am working on bettering myself and going back to school for a cert uh that i should have done a while ago and it's going to take me forever so i just get to sit and click and learn and take quizzes and stuff Mm. Yeah. Is this uh is this with a university or with a trade agency? Trade agency. Okay. Yes. But since you're a safety supervisor, I assume it's like an OSHA deal or some shit like that. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Needs to be done. And it's a good use of my time. And Chris says, Well, I'm leaving for eight hours. And I said, Cool, I got eight hours ahead of me. So that's what we do here. Okay, moving on. Uh, by now, you've heard only a little bit of a soothing broadcast voice of our guest. You know him as a Concourse de Lemons founder, and he's also an occasional Lemons judge, watch enthusiast, and which we'll find out later, land speed record holder among any, many other endeavors. Alan, what you working on? Um, I am taking the uh, 10 off of my 1963 Corvair engine in to get powder coated because the engine is rebuilt. Um, for the first time and running for the first time since 1981 and it is ready to go back in um, so the tin and everything in the engine compartment have to be prepared and I have to drop the uh, so that goes in tomorrow and uh, hopefully this weekend I get to start working on uh, dropping the transmission out um, four speed um, and it's easier to mate them up outside the car and then put the whole unit up in than it is to try to shimmy the engine in and and hopefully not break the input shaft so uh so that's that's my main project right now Mm. i didn't read ahead and didn't understand the watch enthusiast part uh what you're wearing uh right now i am wearing and this is part of the uh the what we'll talk about is i am wearing an omega um it's an integrated bracelet Mm. omega uh, gold plated from the 60s so it's uh kind of kind of a neat watch very nice. I am a Seiko Citizen kind of guy because that's nice. my level of play. And I'm not wearing anything old today, even though I have a ton of old. So I like yeah, it. Uh, Alan, you had a really sweet Rolex that you uh, you posted up on one yeah, of the socials. I had, I, had, I purchased a, a vintage. And I'm not Rolex. a Rolex guy, but that was dope. It was a, it was a, a 6694 reference, um, which is, you know, a, a smaller, older kind of plane thing and I was buying it to uh, modify right because they're they're kind of you know there's they're this cheap kind of plain Rolex um, if the words cheap can apply to the term Rolex Um, but I got it and it was in just such good shape I didn't have the heart to modify it right so I figured uh, it kind of was a duplicate in my in my collection but I put it up for sale for somebody that wanted that patina and wanted a little bit of you know, old school, uh, classy look, and a, a friend uh, who wears his father's beat to heck '60s Submariner snapped it right up and said, "This is the perfect, uh, you know, perfect uh, addition to the Rolex collection." So that's awesome. That's awesome. If, I, if I hadn't already uh, in, in agreed to uh, make another automotive decision, I would have been all over that. That was fantastic. It was really cool. It was a, it was a really neat, and it came with a whole history. That you just yeah. explained i loved it yeah yep. well awesome welcome to everyone watches we're not going to talk about cars at all tonight we're gonna <laughs> just geek That's out right no matt we're not farah matt farah we're t- we're coming for you watches yeah. and cars yeah yeah i'm sure he's really scared yeah really scared <laughs> uh, you know what matt farah has doesn't have dinosaurs 
<laughs> or sharks. Oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> News and notes time. Mental has been at work, air quotes, uh, missing the intros of our last two episodes. Completely unrelated, I'm sure. The famous Oscar Mayer Wienermobile was stranded in Las Vegas after the catalytic converter was stolen. In town for a series of Super Bowl appearances, the 27-foot-long Wiener on wheels was parked at a hotel parking lot. When the crew couldn't get it started Friday morning for, the, for a Friday morning appearance, they were forced to have a towed. The crew at a local Penske truck were able to, oh, excuse me, I missed the line here. Uh, there's the catalytic converter was gone. Um, so it was, uh, they towed it, bleh, the crew towed it, went to the local Penske truck rental and were able to install a cat. And uh, the rolling slice of America, Americana made the show. Jo Joseph Rodriguez, and he was a little bit surprised to see the Wiener Bill Beal when he got to work. A hot dog truck? No way. Imagine a huge hot dog in the middle of your bay. There's all these other trucks, and you got to work on this. So at least there's some joy came from the situation linked to the suspicious incident lining up with mental's absence in our show notes. Very nice. Uh, am I frozen? Can you hear me all? Yeah, yeah. We can hear you. okay, cool. Video's I, my frozen, my video's video. frozen. That's okay. Uh, it, did did you watch the Super Bowl, everybody? Round the horn? Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. Right. Did anyone see the anti Tesla ad and wonder WTF is going on with that? No, we were all still too not. shocked from the uh, awesome Tubi sucker bet where they. <laughs> I was watching. I was and watching it in a in a big bar, like uh, and and everyone in the bar fell for the channel for the, switching. Oh my TV god! Tag. Somebody somebody sat on a remote. Well, in case you missed it, uh, according to Ben Zachariah on the drive, there was a Super Bowl ad that was an anti-Tesla semi-autonomous driving technology. Um, basically a private funded big button, $600,000 for a 30 second ad ran broadcast to an estimated hundred million people in the U S television commercial was paid for by this group called the Dawn project, which is, is an initiative by technology entrepreneur, Dan O'Dowd. I never heard of Dan O'Dowd, but he calls himself an advocate for safety, critical hardware. Sorry, my email is arriving or something. Wow. So he basically said, the, the, yeah, exactly. Tesla's full self-driving mode will run down your children in a crosswalk, swerve into oncoming traffic, hit a baby in a stroller, go straight past a school bus, ignore do not enter. And this voiceover continued as videos of all of these things were on the screen. Shut up and take my money. I, I'm sorry. I, I, yeah, there it is. Who knew Ben O'Dowd trying to get in on the anti uh, Tesla machine and uh, a screw that guy. I welcome our robot overlords and I would like them to drive me to work through the traffic. <laughs> B yeah, we know Elon's a nutbag, but somebody has got to be the first through the wall. I don't know. I mean, it, whatever. I mean, it's not supposed to work all the time, is it? Y your hands are supposed to be there. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. We watched the, so we played uh, Super Bowl commercial bingo. Okay. And so everybody in my household was watching them adamantly. I do not remember. I wasn't really. No. Okay. Oh, I was making right. you watch that because so I the, was checking off your bingo card. Okay. So the, the Super Bowl commercial bingo, because the guy in my office did the same thing. Yes. The Blue Moon commercial. Did you put it down as a Coors commercial or a Miller Lite commercial? Neither. Yes. Or just beer. Beer. It, it wasn't oh, well. an option. It's okay. Oh. All right. I didn't. I don't remember watching this commercial, so I'm watching it right now. That's fine. Oh, the 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 Dawn Project Tesla will kill your children and kill kittens. That's pretty much it. it. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. Next story. Yep. <laughs> Hey, so we've all been there, but it makes us feel a little better. No, we're not the only ones, especially if the person is the successful CEO of Hilton, Chris Nassetta. The tale of Motorious by Steve Symes is a story we can relate to. Chris was in his 20s, had just started in the industry, and was coming off a bad breakup. So he bought a Porsche. This one was a 944, cost more than he made in a year. But as no. he says, you probably know what happened next, either just because you've experienced firsthand or watched someone else go through it. The Porsche did Porsche stuff. It broke, needed maintenance and attention. Got so bad that he took out a loan to help shoulder the cost. 
Mm. Uh, on the odd <laughs> chance that you don't know, if you're already making a car payment, taking out a loan to fix and maintain your car, not a great idea. We also know this is how you can make a bad idea and make it, you know, to make an expensive car your daily driver. And as Apex adjacent calls them, Icarus cars. You can afford to buy it, but can you afford to own it? Well, I don't know. Most people have done it, not just gearheads, but smart folks too. But uh, you'll feel better about the one that damn near broke you. And feel free to tell us about uh, yours in the comments or on our social medias. Mm. Uh, I don't know why my video has stopped working. It says my camera's not working. So I apologize to the YouTube audience. Uh, so y'all know my wife, right? You know what she does for a living. She is a hospitality professor. She teaches about hotels and restaurants and things. And I said, hey, you know the CEO of Hilton? And she went, Chris Ness, uh, Ness Nesetta? I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a great article out about him owning this 944. And then I continued on tapping on my notes. And about 10 minutes later, she tried to get my attention. I'm like, I said, uh, just hold on a second. I have to finish these questions for our interviewee tonight. She goes, are you interviewing the CEO of Hilton? <laughs> she starts like hyperventilating a little. I'm like, no, no, it's oh. just some guy with weird car show. It's just, it's not the CEO of Hilton. Why would we stoop that low? I, I don't know. We have Alan, we have Alan, the head gasket uh, of the saying. Concours de Lamont. Wow, wow, wow. Not some CEO. I've, I've been thrown out of the Hilton. Does that qualify? <laughs> I, I'll, I'll mention that to her. Okay, probably help. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Next story. Is there any more stories? Nope. You know, we do have. What? We have a, I, and I, I, I hesitate to bring this up because I was actually talking uh, with, with our contact over at um, uh, Racing, Racing Junk, Junk uh, Mark, about just our success level in having people buy cars. And because uh, every time we put up like an affordable, semi-decent race car, the uh one of our viewers or listeners snatches it up exactly exactly i'll, I'll share you keep talking about it i'll get it sure there it is my, so since my computer's not working this one we've got a 1993 honda prelude that is already set up it was a period built its car now it needs a little attention looks like it had some uh, dings on the side there and it needs a seat but there it is. It is only $4,000 and it is running and driving. You are ready to take this as your track attack toy. And it's a Honda. What engine is that, Chris? Uh, they had a bunch of them. That one, the picture wasn't great. It's probably an H22, might be an H23. But, uh, okay. you know, they're all Legos. Stuff swaps in. Yeah. And it's got like some, uh, some headers, sort of... wrapped, nice wrapped headers here. Yeah. And takes that crack cool runs there. that in their uh actually their you know, it's probably an h23 which is a single cam car. single cam 2.3 liter so like 160 horsepower but good torque right and single cam hondas are notoriously reliable like yeah. they, they'll actually put up with some some nonsense so on that one so so, so four thousand dollars still for a racing series it's got a logbook it's got history Right. And it's a rebuilt engine and it has documented that it has run 140s at Road Atlanta, which we know that's moving. That's pretty quick. Yeah. yeah. I right. love racingjunk.com. Exactly. And speaking of loving racingjunk.com, their pro club membership right now is only $25 for the year if you use the code pod 23 pod 23 when signing up and that is half off the normal price and i'm just going to be level with you listeners you're going to make us look really good you go out there you just you've, you've spent more at the bar i've watched all of you spend more at the bar 25 <laughs> bucks it gets you an entire year pro membership you're going to get like five ads 50 photos on all of them find out who's watching your ads you can talk to everybody on there you get early access to listings which that, we that's have worth a pro membership that's worth right E1R has a pro membership and there's like, oh, I'm like, oh, this would be great to talk about, but then I can't put it up because, oh, I'm sorry, that's a pro membership. It's a week early. So we don't throw those up there. You get bigger thumbnails. You get to look at all their classifieds. You get it all without the ads. You get a discount at the store to buy some of their cool shirts. So check it out. Pro membership, 25 bucks. Use pod 23. Help us out. Make us look good to racing junk because they're taking us to the Pittsburgh Vintage Grand Prix this year, we hope. All right. <laughs> Do some joy scrolling. Save yourself some money, racingjunk.com. It's so great. And then you can buy some merch, which I'm 
I should just buy myself some merch because I look at it all the time and say, those shirts are so awesome. Well, okay. make sure you log in under our E1R uh, membership. Get yourself that my discount. own membership. Uh, yeah, that is sure. For that kind of money, you can't afford not to. Right? That's right. Okay. Upcoming races! Lemons is at Thunder Hill. This is amazing. Backwards, then forwards, then all of it. That I'm so excited so for this. Cool. This is awesome. Oh, my gosh. And there are apparently 94 teams that think this is amazing. 94, it's pretty big. 13 of them BMWs, not even boring. Uh, mm. 10 Miatas, 6 Hondas, 3 Porsches, and from Judge Eric, a... Uh, quote, general lack of effluence that he is certain will be made up by, uh, made up for by excellent themes, complete and cogent, cogent, cogent. cogent. lemons, um, budget, document. lemons yeah. budget documentation and residual values and collective acceptance of fate for failing to do what is aforement, do the aforementioned. Alan, are you judging this one? I am not. I, I will not be there. But I'm, I'm sure the general unhooptiness of the car will be made up for by the lack of talent of the drivers. Well, sorry for parties bringing these cars. So you're Wise absolutely words. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Well, anything out there on the West Coast is going to be a good time because A, it's nice. And B, I have thought forever that we should be running different track setups each day. So that's exciting. Is it supposed to pour at Thunder Hill like it usually does this time of year in Northern sure California? Sure it is. It's rain. I'll it's check. Northern California, right? Oh, it, it'll, you'll get all of it. It'll be gorgeous, then miserable, then hot, <laughs> then windy, <laughs> then it'll storm, then you'll yeah. freeze. Probably. The sun will come out the next day and it'll be beautiful again. Hey, you know what else is going on? The Lucky Dogs are at Sonoma for the Revenge of the Underdogs. Mark Stanley Memorial Race. 87 cars. 26 of them are BMWs. Mm. Boring. It gets worse. It gets oh, worse. Wow. 37 Miatas. That uh, is crazy. That's uh. terrible. What is that? That is 60. What is that? 63? 63 out of 87 cars are either BMW or Miata. Try harder, people. Uh, three Hondas, two Porsches, and a Fundoro Roadster. What the hell is... Do, Alan, you know what a Fundoro Roadster is? You, you got you're, me. I mean, you're this, the weird car guy. Yeah, and and that's that's stumped me. That's... that's uh, Oh. Yeah, so here it is. Two Brillo chassis, fiberglass body. It's a 356 Speedster, right? Uh, no, one it's point based on the Fun Beetle series in Europe. Oh, so it, it's it like a beetle meant, body. Oh. Well, it's, it's no, it's meant to look body. like a 356, but it's oh, okay. It's a, it's a it's it's really more of an Audi TT. Yeah. Okay. It's a 1.8 VW making 160 to 180 horsepower, weighs about 1,650 pounds. This one that we happen to see on the screen here is convertible. I assume they all are. They, right? they all are. Yes. All right. There are 12 of them available to rent at FundoroRacing.com. Wow. When your uh, when your lemons car blows up right before you got to go to a track day, call the people oh, yeah. at Fundoro. Check that sucker out. Well, the there's always one to three of them at the 25 Hours of Thunder Hill, and then they've been showing up in the uh, NASA Enduros as well. Um, you know, it's it's a they they rent out the seats. They're having fun. Yeah, you know, they're fun little cars. They and they're always finishing. It's a neat little thing. Also, the uh, weather at um, Thunder Hill looks lovely. It's a high of 64, low of 35, so a little bit chilly, but all sunny, no rain, just in case you want to. While you're doing that, Chrissy, I want you to hold your hands up and go, now there's going to be a low-pressure front coming in from the north. No, stop. <laughs> there's no atmospheric rivers this week. That's good. <laughs> oh, it's in our feedback time. Uh, I have to give a shout-out to Carlton S., from the East Coast Volvo racer with Moot Point Racing. Uh, he in Philadelphia. Right. He heard my desire to learn more about garage building and sent me pictures and answered a bunch of questions about his 30 by 40 plumbed with a flushing toilet, <gasps> electric baller workshop it is. outbuilding. It is, it is oh, so it is fantastic. So jealous inducing. He I, all, yeah. all, he sent it to us on the gram. It's friggin' phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. It, if there was a toilet and that much room, I would never come you out. Would fill it with I would live in the garage. You would fill it all I would live in the garage. Absolutely. I would fill it. I would fill it with junk. 
Not the toilet, people. No, the garage. You would, you, would have, you would have to go through a tunnel of garbage to get You're to the toilet. Wrong. You are not wrong. <laughs> Nature abhors a vacuum, especially at Jeff's house. <laughs> uh, yep. I wish my uh, camera was on so you could all see my my uh, office here up. filled with junk. <laughs> I, I don't it. know why. No, my, we know yeah. it's there. Yeah. Yep. Uh, anyway. Hey, well, on the gram, uh, filming with his Miata Mental posted a quick snippet of said Miata. Uh, Kevin J uh, agreed with what we always say. Miata is always the answer. Pet Mono 103 also agreed, simply exclaiming, Miata! Pet Miata. Uh, call to grid.com said, people diss, my, diss the MX-5 until you... F- Till we fill your mirrors. Just saying, make an MX-5 fast, then you'll have skill. Anybody off the street can be quick in a Porsche. Yep. Ah. Ah. Tim B. Ah. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Ah, Tim B. They, they aren't always fast. They can be fast. That's true. Anybody can go fast in a straight line. Uh, Tim B. Like mentals. Hey, don't wheel me, bro. Shirt. Which we still uh, need a copy of. Right? Uh, right? Yeah. Right? Right? Uh, Right. Our YouTube from last week had a lot of extra tips to take care of f- future you. Yeah, we, we should explain this because um, my brother said, I read the intro. What the hell do you mean? Take care of the future you. We were talking about tips that make your future better, even though it might hurt a little now. So Andrew L added quick tip on tools and parts. Make sure when you're at a race, you get all of your tools out. That way, someone can walk up and access them. Uh, when you need to make a quick repair, having the tools and parts all packed away because you didn't want to unpack them first, you know, that's going to set you up for costing time later. Also, make sure everyone on the team is familiar with where the different items are located. We said that. We said label stuff. We didn't say, like, take it out, though. But he, I think he's talking about, a, like, do the opposite of Bruce and the Magic Trailer. Yeah. Something like Chris can Chris has been on the radio and he says, look under the third table, fourth drawer down. It's labeled. Holy it's in a blue out. box. Yeah. yeah, I'll be I'll be in in two laps. Yep. Yep. Um, sorry. Slowbalt said a few tips when buying parts, write down the part number. So you have it when you call the flaps. Also write down the warranty expiration date for the part. Because they said, we usually wear out a, a hub bearings and axles while still under warranty and free replacement parts are great. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Always with the probing inquiries, new Triumph motorcycle owner, Michael K said, quote, one of the mysteries of life is how you determine an expiration date for uncooked rice like the expiration date on distilled water referencing our news and notes about uh rich rebuilds putting a dropping electric his car in right i can right yep thank you greg ob took exception to our comments on mercors he said a mercor scoop scorpio can use a motor from any 80s ford ranger or bronco 2 as if there is any motor in any junkyard in a Ford Ranger or a Bronco 2 that is anything but a boat anchor. I live in the world where Russ forgotten. I can't remember the last time I saw a Bronco 2 in the junkyard. Well, he seems to driving. think that we can get them. So there's that. Uh, and Andrew S. agreed, adding, came here to post this. Also, that the Berker talk may count as triggering you could make a scorpio dominate with a supercharged 3.8 thunder chicken motor rude posted on the face face and uh greg of course replied with andrew you lost me at endurance dominate and super coop <laughs> and andrew clarified dominate the rollback yeah Th- 3.8 supercharge wholeheartedly agree that the 3800 is the greatest motor on the planet, right? Ah, uh, you're thinking GM 3800, not the Ford. I think 30. they're talking Ford, and that's no. much no. worse. No, no. much no. worse. They, they had a supercharged 3800 in a Ford, yeah. and in the original Super Coupe. Yeah, Thunderbird T Bird oh, SC. Oh yes. yes. Oh, that's terrible. Never mind. Alan, you've done a lot of things with lemons, and you've got a vast and wide knowledge that we will probe about questionable cars. Sure. Would you agree that dominate the rollback is an excellent theme for a great team. theme great theme. oh yeah absolutely yeah you, you need a song you need you know you need a, a costume you need a dance routine for it the whole thing 
but dominate the rollback is is definitely you know it's even a, it's even a catchy phrase right <laughs> so Could we get we, the snm gear out we, oh that kind of dominate <laughs> okay <laughs> Everyone sees what they want to in that phrase. <laughs> awesome. There you go. There you go. Uh, so we, we used we used to r run a series of S tens. First it was an S ten, then it was a uh, uh, Isuzu Ombre with okay. a flatbed on the back. And I always said what we need to do is get a really big like power wheel or something and stick it on the back and make it a rollback. Oh, there's a that, Ranger team that does that on the. Uh, I know, but I tried to do it like ten years ago. We never got to. I it. spent so much time building that beautiful steak body, and then it worked so well for our themes for a while. <laughs> if we'd kept That's... the car, then sure. Yeah, yep. it's all right. Uh, you know what? We you know pass. Who doesn't dominate a rollback. There you go. True. That works as long as I keep fixing your car. Yeah, that's true too. <laughs> uh, Chrissy's mom. Chrissy's mom. Hi, Chrissy's mom. Hi. Oh, Chrissy who doesn't does. dominate the rollback because she never needs a tow truck. Although she would probably charm the rollback. I imagine if she had like a rollback to come pick her up by the time she got dropped off by AAA, like, you know, oh, he's coming over for Thanksgiving dinner. He's our, our new friend. He's a wonderful yeah. person. Uh, uh, Alan, you've shared a, a few paddocks with us. Have you come through our pit and had some lovely baked cookie items that are oh, usually yeah. littered? Yeah, those are Chrissy's mom's cookies. Oh, they're fantastic. She listens to every show and every time we have someone... We, we say hi to her. Well, hi, hi, Chrissy's mom. Love the cookies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Main topic uh, time. Go for it, Mental. Our okay. guest, Alan. I, you know what? I've known you for a couple of years. Before I butcher your last name, how do I say your last name? Galbraith. All right. That's what I thought. All right. Alan Galbraith was raised in a hot rod loving motorsports family. He has set the world's slowest land speed record, which I think is question number one, race dirt track, motorcycle road course, drag boats, and just about anything else motorized. After retiring from the television and music business to purchase the Bulletproof series of hot rod events, which I did not know and is amazing. I had no idea. Yeah. A longtime Concours de Elegance attendee, Alan soon founded the Concours de Le Mans a worldwide series of car shows that highlights the worst of the automotive world in a tongue in cheek manner. I was just reading a snippet from classic motorsports last year. I imagine you're because you were at Amelia Island with Tim Stuttered. You guys are uh -huh. like buddies. Uh, and it was, it, it, it is the spirit of lemons applied to car shows as I understand it, which is just get everyone to stop taking everything so seriously. Indeed. Yes. Yeah, that's that's the idea. Our our tagline is is celebrating the oddball, mundane, and truly awful of the automotive world, and that's that's the idea. It's these these kind of cars didn't have a place in the automotive world before Lemons came along, right? You know, you you had to have a Delahaye or a Ferrari or a Delage to go to Pebble Beach or the Amelia. Um, you had to be in a club like a Mustang owners club or a Mercedes owners club to, you know, have, have your tribe there. And, you know, it's, it, we kind of started up as, as cars and coffee was just starting to come along. So they, they, you know, if you had a funky, weird car, you really didn't have a place to show it off. And we said, Hey, we're going to, we're going to put this uh, car show featuring these cars right next to the biggest, fanciest car shows in the world. And lo and behold, it was a hit, right? That's, That's great. That's fantastic. Uh, we got to go back. Hold on a minute. Okay. What is the world's... I, that was great. That was question two. And I, I, I hate question to one. do the sausage making. Alan, you got a light in that room? Because you're starting yes, to let get me, very... Uh, it's, it's, uh, the sun has set here in California, and I didn't turn any lights on. Let me, oh, let me go. go ahead. All right. we, and, and we'll do elevator that, music. Well, while he's doing that, I'm going to say out loud that I am insanely jealous of that sunburst clock behind you. That is so MCM. If I ever come to your house and that turns up missing, don't look at my car. Because uh, that, that thing is clock, really... Older than I am. That thing is really, really cool. Ah, there we go. Awesome. There we go. It's, it's older, older than I am, and it's been in my family since 
since new. So, oh, great. So Very it's nice. A family heirloom. Now I can't steal it. Damn it. <laughs> Here, let me get those, get those lights right out of the. Oh, out it of doesn't matter. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, it, no, help, less than a third of our people watch on YouTube anyway because they don't like and subscribe. Like and subscribe, right. people. Uh, slowest world land speed record. I need to hear this. Please tell so, me it was done on salt. Tell me the story. It was, it was done at Bonneville. Um, and at, if you looked in the rule book after we said it, at the very top was the thrust SSC crew with, you know, near supersonic speed. And the slowest one was Alan Galbraith on a 50cc sidecar motorcycle at 31 miles an hour. Nice. That's awesome. <laughs> And the story behind that is uh, I had some friends who were going out to set a a, a, a real, you know, a, a, a serious land speed record. Um, they were shooting for over 200 miles an hour on a on a motorcycle and a bunch of friends were all going to support them and work in the pits and, you know, and, cook and food. Some, well, somebody brought a pit bike. Well, and that was just it. I was speaking to my dad, who's, you know, uh, mentioned was I'm come from a motorsports family. You know, he was one of the hot rodders after World War II that uh, came home and didn't find life very exciting if no one was shooting at him. So he did, you know, he did uh, crazy stuff like race boats and jalopies and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, I said, hey, let's go. Let's go, you know, check this out. And he says, you know, we could go and watch at the Salt Flats or we could go race. And I went, aha, bought myself a rule book and kind of being the loophole finder that I am, read through the rule book and found a, a, a 50 cc sidecar record that was 30 miles an hour. And I had a YSR 50 in my garage that was a pit bike. And I said, that thing will do 60. But we need to build a sidecar for it. And he says, done so we built the sidecar we took it out there and we didn't go and watched we went and raced and uh one thing i didn't take into account was a very small cc engine two-stroke engine with a very small carburetor needs to be rejetted for the uh for the altitude the altitude at, yeah uh, absolutely yep. very thin air at bonneville and it's normal 60 mile an hour speed was cut back to about 32 miles an hour and that's we just barely broke the record but we broke it so that's uh, awesome. I, I, the, the fact that your dad said we could go watch or all right. I love your dad. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was, what was funnier about it is the chase car, you know, you, you have to have a, a, a chase car and you can't drive the, the, your race vehicles back on the return road. They have to be towed back that my dad and the chase car got to the end of the track before I did on the race bike. So. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you wouldn't want to ride the race bike back because that would take so gosh darn oh, long. So long. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, so. it was it was a it was a ball. We had a bunch of friends there, and I was able to sit up and wave at them as we went by, right? And you know, I had a little radio in, in my helmet and was talking to them, and you know, was saying things like, "Oh, we're you know we're going through the twenty five mile an hour barrier, and there's a lot of buffeting, right? You know that kind of stuff." So. But it was it was an absolute ball to do, and we went back many many times uh, years later set many records, set some serious records. Uh, I ended up with my long course uh, license to go over 200 miles an hour on a bike. And that was, uh, that was thrilling. So it was, a, it was a, a good time. So do we have a, on a bike is where do you, do you need the sidecar to fix your testicles at that point though? That's the hard <laughs> part. It is, it is not a smart thing to do. It's you can, you either need to be brave or dumb and uh, I'm, I'm dumb. So <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's it, does that record still hold? No, somebody has broken that. the uh, The fifty cc sidecar class is now I forget what it is, but it's up around fifty or sixty miles an hour now. It is still one of the slower ones in the books, but I don't know if it is the slowest. I'm like googling right now for the next Predator. What is that hot Predator motor they're selling now? The the red eye or the two twelve? Yeah, the two twelve. I'm sorry. Oh. Damn yeah. it. Scooty is 50 cc. And yes. I'll get that up to 40 when I'm really but trying. He's, but he's technically, that's a scooter. You need a motorcycle sidecar, right? Because they're, uh, yeah, you, maybe. A... Yeah, you'd, you'd have to read up what the current rules are as what, what uh, you know, signifies a a sidecar rig. You know, there's specific rules with the the, the tires, the track, all that kind of stuff. So oh, I'm sure. Mm, okay. 
Well, I, my CT70 would be too big, so I guess we can't do that. Sorry. Well, it would that's have to right. run first. That, that's True. the hard part. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, you told us, you gave us the uh, elevator pitch for what is Concorde de Lamont. Uh, we heard about your 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 life as in the, the billet proof and the, the, the hot rod set. How did like you decide to start this other show? This well, Lemons show. I had, I had retired out of the entertainment industry and and taken up uh, the bulletproof hot rod shows. Uh, and, you know, like I said, my dad being a hot rodder, we always had hot rods around the house. And uh, but we built them on the cheap. It would, you know, at the time it was this whole chip foos movement with these, you know, billet wheels and, you know, smoothed out uh, candy, you know, pastel colored hot rods and his his ethos was, you know, take the fenders off, put a downdraft carburetor on it, and bingo, you've got a hot rod, right? And that kind of coincided with this uh, this um, movement of traditional hot rods uh, that I I came into, uh, kind of found my tribe there, started going to the bulletproof shows, and decided that was something that I wanted to do post uh, entertainment business. So got into that, and very quickly. Um, no, you know, got to know the owners of the show. They were looking to get out of it. I purchased the show from them um, and took over and and quickly learned how to put on a car show. And <laughs> years and years and years before I had started going to Pebble Beach and being kind of a snarky jerk, I always thought, you know, <laughs> I can I can I can get a uh, I could get a Pinto station wagon out here on the green before they stop me, right? And uh, that kind of stuck in the back of my head. And once I figured out how to put on car shows with Bulletproof, I went, aha, I'm going to I'm going to play that joke I had always thought of back in the day of featuring awful cars at a good car show and just came up with the idea of doing that. And uh, that's how Lemons was born. Yeah, I think that's a great way to put it. An awful car at a great show. Like yeah, that's yeah. that's a great ethos there. Um, so anyway, gonna, so for I'm gonna jump in here and just it's it, yeah, they are they are awful cars. But one of the neatest things is, uh, we when I uh, was at the um, uh, New Hampshire race, you had just wrapped up one, and the Pinto that won worst of or what's the 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 it's worst of worst of show is our is our top top, top prize top, yeah, yeah, worst top of prize. show it and this was a full up Pinto runabout orange with the mag wheels period correct orange tweed interior and then they drove it up and they and we used it as the uh, foreground we rolled a uh, tower behind it and did the awards broadcasting over the car but i'd heard the story of this car it had survived somehow in the the northeast and the lady that owned it it quit running and she just called the junkyard to come and get it and this 17 year old kid saw it and said this thing cannot be destroyed. And he called a buddy who called a buddy who called the guy that ended up buying it and putting a turbo coupe motor in there. It, it, but the thing is, my dad owned three Pintos in a row. And Pintos, my, my mom owned two. Pintos were part of the American landscape. And there's a sizable portion of people of a certain age that Pintos formed. And these cars are all but forgotten and thrown away. And that's just the Pinto. Let's not forget the Chevette and just a host of other consumer products that were given to us, but they play a huge part in our formative years. And this one Pinto was saved because of a result of this show. There, there are people that are now saving what would have been dis disposable cars that are important to our combined history as a, as a not just car culture, but American culture that you, you're having this impact on there. I mean, it, so I'm not convinced they're all awful cars. They may have been poorly designed, but the purposes that they served and the lives that they impacted, it has a value of somewhat social. Oh, certainly, yeah. I mean, if if you're of, of a certain age, which I am a, a, a little bit along in years, you remember riding around in the back of a station wagon in the tail gunner seat, right? And that is an experience that people my age all had That's that's gone these days right and that's that's something you still see in movies referencing that you still see, you know you still see that as a as a trope but it was a real thing and you one had to thing earn that, that too does, you didn't just get to sit back there if you oh, were misbehaving you had to move up does anybody want to like sit a sucker? there 
<laughs> but Absolutely. your Mercedes, Chrissy, still I, has those seats I in know. it. I know. That's yeah. what I was saying. If anybody, but, if any of you want to just throw throw back, you can sit in the back. I'll drive. I'll drive to work, and you guys can sit in the back and wave and do make funny faces, faces at other cars. Totally. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Socks out the rear uh, rear our, hatch. Yeah, our totally. car has that. Yes. By the time the kids are out of booster seats, they're too big to fit in the, the way back tail gunner yeah, seat. Yeah, you're, you're not wrong. Though. That's the problem. Yeah, no, because they're like you're 14. You're in a booster seat until you're 19 years old. You're, you're point, pretty. So. You're, that's yeah. absolutely true. You're not wrong. But, but what we found with lemons is, and this was kind of unintentional. This isn't a, a bit of genius on my part, but what we found was just that people have a connection to these cars. You see a Pinto or you see, you know, a station wagon, or you see, you know, even a, a VW bug. I mean, that's a, that's a common car that isn't really celebrated anywhere, but guaranteed someone's got a story. Someone in the crowd's got a story. Oh, me and 12 of my idiot buddies crammed in one and went to a concert, right. Or something like that. Or we broke down and we had to push it, you know, all this, you go to Pebble Beach and you see these cars and they're beautiful and they they're worth, you know, preserving and worth celebrating, but not everybody's got a Delahaye story, right? <laughs> you know, um, but you, guaranteed there's a Pacer story or a minivan story or something like that. And and those come out. You walk around the crowd, you know, and listen at a at a lemon show. And oh, my mom had one of those, or I remember riding in the back seat of that. And and that's a connection that you don't get at other events. Yeah, nostalgia is is obviously people feel it, you know, and you can whether you think it's a great emotion or not. But I, I think there's one thing that you know, we happen to be of a certain age. And that's what you mentioned that if you're a certain age, you remember this, we've talked to Bradley Brown a few times. He's been on the podcast a bunch of times and he's doing the same thing now with the eighties and nineties, but you're really more like weird and unloved, not really a time, you right. know, cause there's, there's weird and unloved from the nineties and from oh, the sixties that I mean, could we, be we, at a concourse together. Oh yeah, we go all the way up. I mean, you can you can have a terrible car that's you know not all that old, and, and there's gonna you know someone's gonna remember it, right? Um, you know, a Ford Taurus, you know, even the the last Ford Taurus, right? You know, oh gee, grandma had one of those, or or we had one when I was a kid, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, there's it's there's no date limit or age limit on the cars for lemons, and that's. That is a, a you know a, a pretty good point. We've had stuff from you know very recent cars. Matter of fact, we had somebody drove a a, a brand new Bentley Azure um, one year, and they said, "Why is this here?" It's like, well, it's a terrible car to start with. And, <laughs> and, now, you know, now, was this or was this not Tyler Hoover? No, it was not. It okay. Was not. Um, but it was, you know, we gave him the I got lost on the way to Pebble Beach award. So, you know, it's, uh, it, you know, you can have anything as long as you have a sense of humor about yourself and your car. You're welcome. That's great. Ah, that's wonderful. Yeah, I, I actually had a question in here. What is car, cars right now aren't weird enough, in my opinion. And I have a weird one. I have a Veloster. So I have like the weird three door, like literally a 14 year old was on the driver's side last night trying to find the door handle. And I'm like, no, there's no, there's only, there's only <laughs> one on this. She's like, I don't get it. Just go the other side. Trust me. So <laughs> cars today aren't weird enough, but what's, what's happening now that could someday be in the Concord dilemmas? Like, is there anything weird or terrible or just funky? Cause I, I, I like funky. Yeah, um, you know, I think I think there's a future for the uh, for the Tesla Model X with the gullwing doors. Oh, they are funky, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's funky and weird. Um, I think there's a place for um, you know early electric cars because I I see that technology evolving you know, quite a bit and some, some sort of alternative fuel car in, you know, the not too distant future is just going to be so good that they're going to look back on the, you know, 150 mile range Nissan leaf and go, God damn, that was terrible. Right. Um, so I think, I think and it's some, disposable. Now people are throwing yeah. them away. They're, they're basically gone. I've never remember seeing one. Yeah. Basically at all. Yeah. I mean, uh, when's, when's the last time you saw a Toyota echo, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, 
stuff many, like that that you know yeah. that or or stuff that people My, didn't buy right hey, hey, auto hey. convertible yeah. <laughs> here's i i have i have i have a great one and actually i'm looking for one of these for to take to pebble beach this year nissan murano cross cabriolet oh Ooh, yes yes aunt becky's car yes, yes. <laughs> um uh buick cascadia is that a chinese built right chinese built no SUV? no, this is, no, this no, is no. The cascadia is the the convertible that they it's only made about oh god yeah. i don't i don't think i know what that is oh it's, it's but terrible yeah, yeah. I, i'm gonna pull that up so, so i love that idea um the next question i have is like so another thing that i don't think is really happening now you know are the designer like sub models you know like we don't we have, have the bill blast edition. we don't have the bill blast editions <laughs> we don't even have like eddie bauer ford tauruses anymore oh, you know so, hang on. there was a gucci edition fiat 500 that's probably about as close as oh, we yeah, that's good. the kind of thing that's like definitely the kind of thing that would show up and if you have a gucci edition now. fiat 500 you need to bring it to a concourse yes. oh absolutely and that's you know that's a modern car that is absolutely qualifies for the concord de la mons <laughs> only if you wear everything else gucci to go with it right? that's right that's I right belt shoes hat the whole shebang right absolutely. Pre preferably knockoffs yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> even right. better even say, better can yeah. you really afford things like that yeah. and sure. you have you have sir mix a lot's swap meet louis playing on repeat yeah. <laughs> so uh, a friend of mine commutes every day in his electric um smart car and wow. i just I, I said to him i'm like is that your only car and he says no 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 i just use this to commute because it gets such fan like it's it's like not even a good electric car yeah. Oh no, that's yeah. not my only car. I have an Aston Martin Signet at home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two. I, I love this idea. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Anyone else got any questions? Yeah, or I'm going to jump yeah, in yeah. another so, one. Go ahead. Is there a car you haven't had in the field that you're dying to see? Yes, there are several. Um, I would love to see, hearkening back to the Pinto, I would love to see a Pangra Pinto. Now, if you oh, don't know, the, oh, yeah, Angra Pinto. I don't know uh, that. I'm googling Pinto that. Googling was now. a was a um, the best way to describe it is a drop nose Pinto. It had a sloped nose. They re they restyled the the front end, Whoa. and they they the suspension was sport tuned. Was was what it was. It was a hot rod tuner edition Pinto. I'm I about did to not I'm know about what to share that was, screen. but I remember having a conversation with Eric Root about that. Yep. Uh, of course, I mean, Eric knows all of that. And yes. And, and this was when they, cause they were doing Pinto spec racing and you had people like, um, uh, the, oh, darn it. What was the, the Indy 500, um, Janet, uh, Janet Guthrie. Thank you. That's how she got her start was in spec Pinto. And that they, and like, so there was like this fringe of performance Pinto people. And this was trying to get into that market. This black one I have up right now is fire sexy. Oh yeah, yeah. Like that's it's, amazing. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I we have not seen one of those. We've got quite a quite good support from the from the Pinto community, but those are exceedingly rare, and we just have not seen one out there yet. Um, gosh, there's you know we've the problem is we've had. You know, I I consider myself a, a connoisseur of the of the weird and wacky, but yet every year at at most of the lemon shows, there's something I've never heard of before. So it to to say, I, I, hey, we haven't had one of these. You know, it's it's you know, I'm I'm stymied because boy, we've had some weird stuff, man. <laughs> but like the Tojin was something Tojin, I learned about yes. last year. That yeah. was crazy. Yeah. Just absolutely, you know, not so stuff. You know, I I thought I was going to be the weird one when I brought my months, but two more showed up. Right? It's like, well, how do you? <laughs> <talk> about, <right? laughs> so, uh, yeah, coming up here in a couple of weeks, you're heading back down to, um, um, I don't know, because you guys, you're, yeah, you're tied in with Classic Motorsports. So you're heading back down to Amelia Island again. Amelia Island. Yep. Haggerty is putting on, uh, they have taken over the, uh, the Amelia Island Concours now renamed the Amelia. 
Um, and there's a series of events there now with, uh, with the, all the other stuff that goes on. There's, there's uh, you know, more than a few auctions that happen that week. There's a Porsche event. Um, there's, um, and the Saturday before the big Concord, there is Haggerty's uh, Cars and Community event, which is a very large Cars and Coffee, um, Concord de Limones and a Radwood that happen all on the golf course course that will host the uh, Amelia the next day. Um, so we are, this is our fourth year at, uh, in Florida with the Concord de Limones. And just let me say, Florida does not disappoint <laughs> when it comes to, when it comes to crappy cars. So <laughs> a few years ago, yeah. you gave, uh, the, the infamous Cadillac Cimarron that previously belonged to, um, uh, Dr. Florida man. And now it resides in Texas. Yep. The, ah. the the five speed Cimarron, yes, which the I think lure is bra interior. brown yeah. on brown on brown, right? Yeah. I forget how many were made, but it was it was I think only in the double digits. And uh, boy, who knew they made a five speed Cimarron, right? Well, well Donnie did. That's the problem. Of course, Donnie did, right? Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that was there last year. Our worst. At, we had several standouts at the show last year. We had the highest mileage DeLorean on the planet. It has over. It's like eighty-seven. What I mean? No. Well, it has over eight hundred thousand miles on the thing. And oh, what? Yeah. Cow. They're they're shooting for a million miles. Um, and, and it is a full Back to the Future time machine replica. The couple that own it are uh, set designers in the movie industry, and they have done it up to the T. <laughs> is it still PRV powered? That yes. can't be possible. There's oh, yeah. no way PRV. They've been through more than a few of them. I so. would imagine. <laughs> um, At but they, 60 miles an hour, because that's all it could do. Yeah, yeah. So they, it's been around the world. It's been in most, I, I think they said it's been on every continent but Antarctica. Um, it's been in most of the countries of the world, and they use it as a fundraising tool. Um, I'll, I'll send a link along that you can put up. And the, they, the, they're featured in the documentary about the movie. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes. Yep. Uh, so uh, we, uh, uh, it's the to the the disease that Michael J. Fox is battling. Yes. Yep. Their their charity is the Michael J. Fox Foundation. Yep. Um, and they they use the car to raise money for for that for Parkinson's research. Um, so uh, so he uh, that that car was there, but our worst of show last year, uh, being very Florida, just two words: boat truck. Um, it is. It was a. A, a Ford F-150 chassis with a, um, a ski nautique boat that was pulled out of a, out of the swamp, but, you know, put over the top of the body and, uh, the people that drive it, you know, wear, uh, captain's hats and whenever they stop, can they get in a boat truck and put on a nautical theme. I if know. You really Jesus. want to do something. I you like do it up like them. the boat from Jaws. I feel like, I feel like we need to yell Simpsons did it. Yeah, yeah. For every time some you mentioned something that we've done before prior, we right. we did actually we yeah. we and by I mean we my three co-hosts built and then I just showed up and raced a uh, seventy two C Sprite mounted onto an S ten chassis. Yeah, yeah. This is just the larger version of that, but of course it would come out of Florida, right? And uh, yeah, it was it was perfect as a as the worst of show winner. We need to meet them and see what their version of what a wonderful new smell you've discovered was. Uh, <laughs> similar. That is that is fantastic. All right, here's our uh, sea sprite boat right there. Nice. Well done. Yes. Yeah. That is terrible. Uh, it, <laughs> it was surprisingly quick. That's the problem. <laughs> uh, yeah. Chevy S10, roof cut off, 73 sea sprite, sprite right on it all the suspension all the brakes it uh, surprised a lot of people what was uh what was what was because we talked about you know again this is it's it's it, americana and part of our culture what was the one that you bonded most with you know I, I, like people not much younger than us would freak out over a mint condition 84 caravan you know something like that what was the car you went oh my god significant emotional things happen to me in a car just like this oh gosh the, there's there's so many um you know uh 
it, any any large 70s station wagon does it for me because that was you know that was kind of what i grew up with right vista cruiser with the windows and the roof absolutely yeah you know if if, if someone had a had a vista cruiser it, you know that's not a, a very lemony thing and yet people usually keep them in in good shape but that you know that would do it i remember cramming you know 14 of my my closest high school friends into a 71 vista cruiser and going to lunch every day in high school right so um those those are pretty near and dear to my heart um any old ford product uh 60s ford products have this smell and i don't know what it is it's it's maybe the the foam depression yeah it smells it smells like Sweat. failure yeah um, but uh but yeah anything that has that old car smell like that i really i really bond with that's great uh so in your personal collection are you a hoarder or an automotive add -er? do you turn them over or do you have like your core that will never leave i've got a core that will never leave i have a couple family cars that that will you know go down to to my kids um i've got a 63 corvair that my dad bought for me when i was three years old and years later, I realized, yeah, <laughs> that's what he told your mom, at least. Ding, 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 ding. Um, years later, I realized, you know, oh, gee, I bought this for Alan. It'll be his it'll be his high school car. And of course, I got to high school and had a 65 Mustang and wanted nothing to do with the Corvair. And then I realized, hey, dad didn't buy that for me. He just wanted a convertible and blamed it on the kid. Right. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. liking your dad more and more. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I wanna, I wanna swap this up a little bit because we we make this joke all the time. I'm the oldest. Our youngest is Chrissy. Mm -hmm. Chrissy, what would be the Concours de Lamans? Maybe not necessarily something your parents owned, but run this past Alan. What would be the ubiquitous car that everyone had when you were just before driving age, a tween as they call it now? And Alan, what would you, which version of it would you like to see? Datsun 210. Datsun 210. Oh. Okay. Nice. Yeah. It's got to yeah, have the but, honeycomb wheels, honeycomb wheel covers. The honeycomb wheels. Probably wheel. do better, but you put me on the spot. That's what my dad drove. So that's the only reason why I'm, I throw that out there. I'm, I'm totally down with that. Yeah. yeah. Dodson 210 would work as long as it has the there wasn't there addition that had like a bumblebee on the back yeah like, I think it, that's yeah because yeah. they had the uh, the golf they call them the golf ball wheels the honeycomb golf yeah absolutely oh man a honey a no, Dodson honeybee yeah Chrissy how yeah. about a uh, Cutlass Sierra that was, was what my your next mom one. had back that in the day that was my next yeah. one <laughs> cut loose yeah <laughs> quality cars um yeah, any 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 '90s car with like a, you know overt cladding on it, I think would would. Fall oh, out. I had a I had a um an avalanche from the first year when the cladding was like gray and never turned black. Yep. But that was yeah. that was fantastic. I'm thinking any of your high end Grand Ams, your 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 Jug Alexis, your Jug Lambos. We're having an yeah. early Mercury Sable wagon with the wood grain still. Six thousand STE all wheel drive. Oh, oh. That's oh. And for <laughs> those Pontiac built excitement. Yes. Yeah. For those for those of you who don't know, the Datsun five ten honeybee two ten honeybee two ten two ten five ten is the the infamous dime the box yeah yeah, yeah. yeah there you yeah. go. Uh, if you've Look got those wheels, your, if you got one of these in your neighborhood and you want to be a legend. Roll on down to Florida. Get that. Get that bad boy. That's yep. that. That's sweet. The honeybee would totally dominate. Yeah. So so here here's my automotive obsession. All right. It's got everything you need. Rust from the factory. Right. Okay. Dead brand that nobody knew. And absolutely impractical yet amazingly advanced. My first car was a 1973 International Harvester 2. Oh, wow. I would give my left and right whatevers to get another one of them. And they have absolutely skyrocketed in price. And they are so bad. I mean, terrible. Anything, anything International Harvester, 
by definition and from the name, but it's true with the feel, defines the term agricultural. Absolutely. It was absolutely <laughs> agricultural. Yeah. Yeah. They, they made no pretense of, of, you know, actually making it a usable vehicle. It's like, Hey, we know how to make tractors. Let's put a body. Let's on make them. a tractor. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Lo I would, if I were to bring my favorite car to the Concord dilemma, that's what it would be. It, outstanding. Yes. You know, some, Something you can you can drive to town and tow the tow the crop in with it, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, without a doubt. Yeah. So here here's a fun fact. So the the um, International Harvester three forty five V eight was wow. the most available torque V eight in those years from like seventy two to seventy eight, and it had the largest gear reduction available in four wheel low. Wow. So you could tow the planet if you chose to. At four miles at, an hour. At like at, 400 exactly. RPM. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something like 365 to one. Oh, jeez. It's crazy. It's a tractor. Yeah, yeah. it's tractor. That's exactly. what it does. Wow. Cool. All right, man, so what would be your your car that was in the cockles of your heart that you would bring to the 24 hours of Le Mans or uh, me, Concord of Le Mans. The earliest iteration, 77 Datsun. I think they're, they were called the 620 series pickups, but at the time uh, it was the little hustler and it was the earliest introduction of the King cab. And it really wasn't, it was just an extended cab on a Datsun pickup. Um, Dad being a Datsun sales guy, uh, always had one of those and you all, it was always from the dealer, but he actually bought one of those, the little hustlers. I remember it was red, had the white mag wheels on it, raised white letter tires. Yeah. Vinyl interior. Cool little truck. That's, uh, that's the one I would connect to. Get ready to draw. No, that's a four by four. That's not oh. a little hustler and it's not an extended cab. It says little hustler. Yeah, uh, it's got to have the little king cab thing on okay, it. Okay, Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, following us down, Chris. I'm gonna pick the 1990 Mazda MPV four wheel drive version. Oh, wow. wow! Now that's one thing you haven't seen in a very long time. But I spent a lot of miles in that, and back in the day, my dad had one new, and uh, I definitely did not jump it off of anything. Nope, <laughs> definitely not. <laughs> yep. My gosh. But yeah, those all rested away long ago because they're all sold in, in salt states and Mazda not known for their incredible rust proofing. That's closer. That's a, that's a how's that mental? Yeah, that's yeah. a 720. That's, that's close like as the, I can get. I know. That's like the race truck that we had. Yeah. Wow. Well, that yeah, that I that I that I screwed up. Um and I we're 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 going to get all of Alan's socials, but while you're sitting there listening to this, get a hold of us on any of our social medias. Tell us what your emotional concourse to lemons car is. All right. And it doesn't count if like, Oh yo, my aunt had this really cool Mustang GT convertible. No, no, no. We need unloved, unloved, unloved that's the key ubiquitous. And now you can't find them. Like Eric has got a, a, a known and documented soft spot for early eighties uh ford escorts yeah and, oh, who, can, and who can and who but can blame them Di Team diamond is amazing yeah, yeah. yeah so is there a a an american brand that is more unloved than american motors no there is not and and yeah you know, speaking of agricultural um you know <laughs> We, we celebrate American Motors in that we even have a special award for American Motors. We have the Chronic Dick Teague Syndrome Award that we give out. Which <laughs> I is, don't know what that means. I might need a little bit of an explanation. Dick Teague was, was the designer for, for American Motors. Okay, um, got it. And, you know, when you look at a Pinto or you look at a Pacer, you look at a Matador, you know, if you're unfortunate enough to look at a Matador, you know, you look, you look at these cars, there's, there's definitely a design language and it came from Dick Teague's mind. And uh, we, we celebrate that with its own special award. 
Uh, didn't a Matador come in a Bill Blass edition? It, it did. Um, there was also a an uh, AMX. I forget. Was it? Uh, wasn't. It started with a J. Um, it wasn't Jordash, but it was a. There was. There, oh, there was a Pierre. Oh no. Of, an yeah. Oleg Cassini AMC Matador. Wow. Oleg Cassini. Yes, indeed. Yeah, one, had, of, one of the better known designers. Yeah. What, a- one of my first watches was an Oleg Cassini. Wow. With a with a uh, moon phase. Complicated. Oh, boy. There it is. Oleg Nothing but class right there. <laughs> yeah, that is 17 feet of... Woo. Yeah, there there were more than a few AMC designer editions um, that were just over the top, right? Uh, I mean, so this award, what has it gone to? Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you there. Keep going. It, it can go to anything. It's actually gone to um, a couple of Nashes, you know, overly designed 50s Nashes, just with the whole AMC connection. Um, it We have a, a whole category for... Um, you know, the, the awards at, at Lemons, some of them go to uh, country of origin. And for the American cars, we've had to break it up into Rust Belt, American Junk, uh, Ford, GM, Mopar, and other. But now other encompasses a whole bunch of different brands that, you know, if an AMC doesn't win the other we make sure to give it the, give it that award just because we want to we want to reward people bringing AMCs to the show. So, so so in your opinion, did it get better or worse when Renault took over? Oh, I mean, for for, for the lemons, better. Yeah. I mean, better, oh right? God. You know, <laughs> what what I mean, could be better than the worst American car company yeah. getting bought out by the worst European car company? A Reliant GTA perfection. Right. I mean, <laughs> convertible. I hope that's, that's right. They, yeah. they used to, they used to advertise instead of advertising their zero to 60, their big advertisement was how quickly they go from 60 to zero. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but it brought us the Eagle medallion. So you know, right? we're okay. <laughs> there, there are so many spinoffs of that unholy marriage that, that just, you know, warm my heart that I hope show up to a, to a lemon show, but most of them are gone. I mean, most of them are gone a couple of years after they rolled out the showroom floor. And we make a lot of fun of Stellantis around here just because a, the name is hilarious and B there cannot be a better clash of cultures, except maybe diamond star motors, diamond star motors might be the worst clash of cultures ever, but my God, Stellantis, really? That's what we're putting together here. So Stellantis sounds like a budget casino in Reno, right? Uh, we just Stellantis, thought it was a- right? Yeah. <laughs> Just <laughs> behind the 7 Eleven, lots of free parking. Stellantis may cause rectal bleeding. and <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Check your position to see if Stellantis is right for you. Exactly. That's right. Uh, uh, that's, this is fantastic. Um, so, is there a European AMC? Is there an Asian AMC? Is there a like off the weird continent, like a South American something that approaches AMC in Lemonis. Oh, uh, Dacia. I mean, the finest of Romanian uh, metallurgy, right? <laughs> I mean, that's, uh, Good you know. Call. Good call. Be, be how careful. Could we, how could we forget? I, I forget Dacia. Be careful. Our first race car was a Wartburg 311. Yeah. Well, <laughs> so. yeah. But again, it's not Dacia. No, yeah. right. No, but yeah. I'm I'm just saying. Uh, Asian, I don't know, man. That's uh, you know, there's, I mean, there's 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 all kinds of you know Asian micro brands that have come and gone that I'm not that familiar with. I'm sure someone out there would will will come up with the comments, some sort of agricultural, you know, crossover in Japan where you know, hey, we made micro combines. Let's make a car. Right. I'm thinking Daihatsu maybe is about as close. Yeah, as Daihatsu up, charade, and like somebody shows up with a Daihatsu charade, they could win. Not yeah. only Radwood, but or Rocky. I, Come on. Or, oh, what was what was the one that they got sued for for stealing Jeep? Was that the Rocky that they that Jeep because it had the seven slat grill? No, that's Mahindra. That's, that's okay. Right. That was that was recently yeah. too. So. 
Yeah, except there's the, the a lot Manager of, is not street legal. It was yeah. deliberately meant as a side by side. There's a lot of people importing K trucks now, and I think that is just keep doing that. Just <laughs> thank you. Keep doing that, everybody. Yes. Yeah, every, that's what, exactly what you need in America is a you know a 34 horsepower something where you are the crash crumple not, zone. Nine right. foot long steak yeah. body pickup truck. That's perfect. Yeah. Yep. I, I have one more question that I pre-wrote here, so I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, kit cars, custom cars, low volume producers, big part of the weird car world. We keep hearing that now that electrics are all skateboard designs, they're going to bring back coach building and, you know, we're going to have all these weirdo cars because low volume producers are going to be able to buy like the Tesla skateboard and put whatever they want on top of it. Is this going to happen? When is it going to happen? And what can I buy? I I don't think so. I mean, you, you like you mentioned the, the, you know, the Tesla, uh, Tesla platform, you know, they've said all of our patents and everything, all of our technology is, is open source. You can take it and do whatever you want. Well, sure. Anybody with a billion dollars can go make that happen. Right. Um, all you have to, you know, step one, have a billion dollars. Step three, you know, profit, profit. Yeah. Our company. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Underwear gnomes in the middle made it. I don't know what's going on. Right. Yeah. Um, so I don't, I'd love it. I mean, I'd love to take a Tesla Tesla skateboard platform and put a Brubaker box body on top of it. That'd be awesome, right? But I just don't think it I just don't think it's going to be available. Yeah. One of the things we were talking about is the scarcity of the metals for the batteries. Because why would Tesla sell you the skateboard or any a VW, any of the major manufacturers? Why would VW give you the skateboard if they could sell you an entire car? Jeff. Right. Jeff. Jeff, Jeff, you notice how like everything around you looks like you're inside of tunnels because you're going down a rabbit hole. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll stop talking about electric cars. Al, this is fantastic. Um, is there anything that you're doing outside of Lemons that you'd like to push? Are you still doing the billet shows? Are you still going anywhere? You're racing no. anywhere? What are you doing? Um, currently, no. I'm. Uh, I uh, sold the uh, the billet proof shows um, uh, pre pandemic. Uh, was kind of getting you know was kind of getting a little a little more involved in the in the lemons ecosphere you know with the racing and the rallies and that and said you know I need to you know focus my attention on on being as crappy as I can and it, you know it worked <laughs> right so um you know we we expanded expanded the uh, Concord de Limon's, uh you know universe and added shows and you know started doing some different stuff um you know I'm I'm kind of uh, going to start branching out cuz in in this crazy world, I realized, you know, not just with crappy cars, but I get to do some pretty cool stuff, right, that not a lot of people do and uh, see if I can't, uh, you know, share that with some folks, do some video, do, do some things along those lines, um, you know, in, in addition to the to lemons at Amelia. I'm helping show the 16th Ferrari ever made at the show on Sunday. Oh, so, oh. Yeah. So, you know, that's not, you know, a lot of these, you know, God bless all the all the automotive media that's out there on social media and YouTube and all that these days. But, you know, any any idiot can go buy the cheapest Mercy Lago in the world and and make a video about it. Not many people get to screw around with the 16th Ferrari ever made. And that's uh, you know, I'm, I find myself in those kind of situations. So I'm going to start start sharing that with the world. So get to do some kind of neat stuff. Is that kind of some kind of Fangio F1 car or something? What's going on? It, with, it what is, is it? Not. It is. Uh, it's a street car. It's a, oh. a, a 1949 166. Um, it's a cabriolet of which they made three. And it is but ugly, um, which is kind of uh, it's beautifully restored. It's a fantastic car, but it is not the most attractive Ferrari in the world. Um, but it is unique in many, many different ways and just its age and rarity make it, uh, make it pretty special. Well, that's an excellent transition. Now you're, you're looking to share this. You, you got a, you got a social media handle. You got a YouTube, you want to put it. We've got the concourse to lemons, Facebook schedule and Instagram in our links, but anything else you want people to follow you to see not just ugly and unloved, but also rare and beautiful. Where can they find you online? 
Uh, the uh, Concord de Limones has a YouTube channel as well. You just look up Concord de Limones on YouTube. It will pop right up. We've got a bunch of videos there from the shows and a bunch of old uh, car commercials and, and uh, reviews and stuff like that. Um, I have a, my personal YouTube channel. If you look up Alan Galbraith, it'll come up. There's not a lot there now, but I'm, I'm producing some stuff. There's, there's some, there's exciting months content on my own personal Ooh. YouTube channel. What is that? A jet? Months jet? What is the months? months? Jet. Yes. Um, but there's going to be a lot more of uh, different stuff that I get to do, um, like the Ferrari, um, some some watch content, some music content, stuff like that. So, and we will have links to all of that in our show notes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, what what's your months jet? I gotta know. It was uh, months. Uh, it was M one fifty seven is the uh, is the serial number. They made about four hundred of them. There's about forty of them left, and mine was the only road going unrestored months in the world. And um, convertible, right? There are they were all convertibles, weren't they? They were all convertible. They had what's called a Carson top on them, so it was a hard. It was a soft top, but it was a, a rigid um, convertible. You had to lift it off. Um, yeah, it was, and they're they're actually fairly terrible cars as well. <laughs> they they are beautiful though. I just I had went, to go Google it because I literally did not know what you're talking. About. Honestly, yeah, but... I've gone back and forth on them. Some of them are are pretty. This one is actually fairly pretty because it's lowered and has a chop top. Um, but uh, they, I went back and forth between them being pretty and just real froggy looking, and it it depended on which angle you caught mm. it at and what what day it was so yeah, agreed yeah munces are nice i i i love munces they, they're pretty cool at least i knew what it was other than right. some other things yeah right well this has been excellent thank you very much alan if anyone wants to find you we're gonna have all these links in the show notes we're i'm sure we're gonna see you on the uh on the track or on the paddock or at a show some point um we'll make sure donnie doesn't show up to your show in florida and doesn't bring his <laughs> five speed he probably doesn't have it anymore but no he, he sold it he sold it to uh the gnome hammer uh who's i think donnie is coming to the show and he's bringing something korean that's all he would say so oh, <laughs> oh okay he's got something up got his sleeve got it yeah well if i ever can find myself a uh a, what, what's what's the indian brand that has a tiny little cars uh the um intro Ata. if Tata. If I could ever find the Tata, I saw one on the street <laughs> once in America, and I said, "I need that." Yeah, it, when it, when a smart car is too luxurious for you, there's Tatra. Tata Motors <laughs> for you, but like the biggest car company in the world, right? I mean, second or third largest. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, we all wish our tiny overlords. We'll, we'll be driving them all someday. Uh, so thank you very much for coming. Please stick around. We do have a last segment. And I believe Chris is going to come up with something and uh, we're going to go around the world, right? <laughs> Since when have I been blue? I don't know. Oh, sorry. It's mental has something. <laughs> All right. So it's, it's, uh, this is one of the, one of the, the, the weird ones that doesn't fall into our categories. Um, but it's a, a new podcast. It's available on YouTube and you can find it on Haggerty. And we've got links to it. And it is by Sam Smith and Sam Smith is at his core a storyteller and a very, very good one. We've talked about some of his stories. He writes for Haggerty. He's done all kinds of other stuff. And he has a new podcast called Driven to Fail. And one of the things that Chris kind of coined this phrase, we always say is learn from us, learn from our mistakes. And this show is not about these great successes, but it is about people that have had to deal with adversity and what they do next. It's got one episode right now. And it is the PR representative who represented Ford during the uh, Firestone Explorer failure. Oh. And what's great about this is this, this guy made a decision as the PR representative that he absolutely knew was going to get him and his boss fired. And his boss said, we have no other choice. Do the right thing. And then he found himself at Nissan right about the going time this, <laughs> he has uh as sam puts it he bounces from house on fire to house on fire to house on fire and never once lost his integrity lost his way or lost his guidance it is a really really compelling interview and it's a great story and there's a lot more coming and this is the thing because alan 
you've been on Haggerty. We've got links to, to an interview with you and Mike Musto, and we've got links to a, an interview with you on Haggerty talking about this. Haggerty is a very good collector car insurance company. They're an insurance company and they run on numbers. So I am shamelessly applying our listeners, go to YouTube, subscribe to this, and then subscribe to it on the, uh, when it, when it comes available on Apple podcast, because whether or not Sam gets to keep doing this is all going to come down to the numbers on this. And it's a really good show. And if you decide not to listen to it, just subscribe it because Sam's a really good person. He's a really good storyteller and he deserves to be able to keep doing this. And it, uh, a lot of these shows are going to restore your faith in humanity and the, the industrial age. So please check it out. Link in our show notes, driven to fail, Sam Smith. Free plugs, everybody from mental. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, Actually, Sam is trying to come on this show, and we're going to talk about Oh, him. absolutely. We're going to talk about him. All right. Do we have, a, a, an, Alan, any comments on the Ford versus Firestone debacle? Uh, let's talk about unloved car. First generation explorers. <laughs> right? I mean... Yeah, just they absolutely. Oh, they God. made millions of, but how many of them got sucked up by, uh, by the junk? What is that? The uh, it was it was the cash. Yeah, cash to clunkers, man. Vehicle. So many really good GT40 heads on the 302s. Well, that and and that, well, forget that the four liter two doors, the really early ones, they were kind of neat little trucks. They're they. Nothing like that on the street today. I mean, it's not a Mazda Navajo version. That's oh, the best sure. one. Sure. <laughs> oh, there wow. you go. Oh, nice. What was yeah, what was just, the? He just a Zuzu to cindered your GMC Envoy. What what was uh, the uh, Italian oh. company that that rebodied them? It was La not. You're was thinking of La Forza. La Forza, but it, Forza it, yes. That was it's La Forza, and it was nothing to do with an Explorer, Jeff. Just, it wasn't. I thought it was an yeah. Explorer. Nothing to do with it. it had a five liter. Just looks remarkably like one. Just, yeah. uh, there are a lot of musicians named Alan Galbraith, which confuses things because um, he is, uh, you know, coming from the music industry. So, um, but if you search for him, and also you've got your uh, your Rolls Royce Silver Spur that you've been working yes. on. Fortunately, do not have that anymore. One of the worst okay. cars on the face of the planet. You're talking to three people who raced one. Oh boy. It was a I silver shadow. But, silver you know. shadow. Close enough. Yeah. Same thing. They're they're all terrible. <laughs> yeah, they're all terrible. Well, we're going to wrap up the show here. Thank you, Alan, for coming out. And thank you, everyone, for downloading us. We hope you enjoyed this week's edition of Everyone Racers. We also hope you'll join us in the world of driving, racing, and building, because everyone can be a racer, even you. If you enjoyed this podcast, subscribe. It's totally free. Then go to iTunes and give us a five-star rating. If you're watching us on YouTube, hit that like and subscribe button, whatever you do. Even if you hated us, hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any show ideas, drop a comment on our facebook page everyone racers email us at everyone.racers at gmail.com you can still text mental mental wants a picture of every concord de la Mont car you find this week text him a picture 484-243-0455 instagram or twitter at everyone.racers youtube facebook everyone racers reddit slash e1r my God, we have a ton of social media. Find us wherever you can. And most importantly, thanks again. And until next week, keep the shiny side up. Unless your camera's not working. In this case, just have a picture from when you're in college. Damn. It's not that old. Thanks. <laughs>